today we are looking at recording some film music using Logic Pro 10. I'm going to import a bit of film. It's an action movie film clip. You might be able to import something else. So what are our aims for the day? In creating music for film or for movies, you've got something known as a sync point. And the sync point is where the audio track and the images line up. So when something specific happens on screen, there's also a musical moment that happens together with it to enhance uh, what it looks like and feels like to the audience. We need to add some markers to those points where we then later want to add some musical effects. So let's go ahead and do that now. We need to set up our marker track itself. Move your mouse pointer to where it says movie at the moment and right click. On right click, you'll see it says show marker and we want to click on that again. Now we've got our marker track at the top. Every time we press the plus button, it will create a new marker for us. Hit enter to go back to the start and then we are simply going to press play. But as the movie plays through, we are going to press the plus sign every time something significant happens in the movie on screen and that will create a marker for us so that we know where we need to add our musical effects. Let's do that now. So I go up, I press play. First one coming up, there. You can see that I have added those markers every time something significant happens on screen. But now we need to take it further. We need to add samples to those specific points. I prefer to use musical sounds. To get to all of those sounds, we need to open samples. So take your mouse pointer to the sample button, the loops, Apple loops button, and click. I quite like this one. So I might go ahead and add that to a few of the markers. So just click and drag in. You'll notice that by default, it's smart snaps, but our markers aren't necessarily on the bar line itself. So we will need to switch off that snapping function. To do that, we need to go up to this little gear icon, click, go to snap. We want to move that onto ticks. Now, when I move it, do you see I can move it in between the bar lines? I've set it so that it's right on the markers. You can see that I've added some of that sample to those markers. Note, you don't have to use the same sample every time. Now, our next step is to add some music to this. The music always needs to be in the correct mood. I've listened through some samples and I've picked the drum loop that I want. So I click on it and drag it in. You'll see it's created once. I can use the loop tool to loop it. Let's have a listen to what we've done so far. The effect wasn't quite in the right place. So we might have to pull that forward just a little bit like that. I highly recommend that you record some of your own sounds. You need to create a new track. Take your mouse pointer up to the top to where it says track. Go to new tracks and then you'll notice you've got some options, right? We want a new software instrument. That means that I'd be able to play things in and it creates a new track. Now this is set to classic electric piano, but you can use whatever you like. All that needs to happen is for me to press enter to go back to the start and to make sure that my track is record enabled. That's this R. <laughs> So that's a little motif that I've just recorded and it's repeating and repeating over, but it fits within the style, within the mood of our music. And that's really important. So what's left to do? Well, we need to create more parts. Okay, so I've recorded several different parts. I've put every sound on a separate track, a separate layer. I have a drum layer, a bass layer, a chord layer, a melody layer, and then I also have some effects on our markers in an effects layer. Now, if I play a little bit for you. What do you think we can do next? The obvious thing to do is to now mix the sounds together because at the moment, certain sounds are too quiet and others are too loud. You take your mouse pointer to the mixer icon and that opens the mixer down at the bottom. You'll notice we've got all our tracks laid out here. 
Now the fader, if you move it down, decreases the volume. If you move the fader up, it increases the volume. Step number two would be to use automation. I've actually done an automation tutorial separate to this. I'll link it. Let's have a listen to what the whole thing sounds like. So that gives you a good idea of what it should sound like. It is your turn now to go and try this out. Enjoy.